The time has finally come to test the world's fastest graphics card. Resellers, scalpers, shortages tried to beat me and tried to stop me from getting this card. But in the end, we came out victorious with the 5090. Around a month ago, I was actually able to finally pick up the 5090 Tough there. I did buy it secondhand. Someone was selling an unopened one and I just decided to pick it up off Facebook Marketplace. Now, why did I feel okay with buying one secondhand? First of all, the guy was reputable. And second of all, I kind of said openly a couple months ago that there were three cards I was really looking for. The Founders 5090, just because I think that one looks cool and it is pretty innovative. The Astral, which is just kind of an awesome card. I ended up actually being able to get my hands on a 5080 Astral that I tested a couple months ago. And I really like the design and I really think it's awesome, as well as the Tough, which I picked up here. Why am I a big fan of the Asus branding? Just because they do actually have phase change thermal pads on their cards, which means I do not have to tear them apart and repaste them later down the road. As well as also, this is a little bit niche. I've mentioned this before, but I'm a big fan of having two HDMIs just because I think that a lot more monitors nowadays use HDMI, such as my OLED, as well as my TV. One thing though that a lot of people have kind of talked about on the internet is the driver issues with NVIDIA. So I decided to test something. Through this entire review period of me testing the 5090, every time a brand new game ready driver installed, I was installing it as soon as I got back on the PC just to see if there were really any issues and if anything was fixed or anything that I noticed. And guess what? Absolutely zero issues that I had problems with. Nothing occurred, nothing arose, nothing that I actually noticed. Which makes me wonder if these people who are reporting on these issues are just kind of echo chambering other people's things. Because me personally, I didn't have any issues. I did actually have some issues back on the 5080 Astro with overclocking. But since I have end up picking up the 5090, they've all gone away. If your experience is different though, feel free to comment down below and just tell me what kind of driver issues you are still having. Why did I even think about picking up a 5090? Everyone says that it really isn't that impressive and it really doesn't matter. It's because it's the fastest and there's actually games that I was currently playing that actually needed more performance. I actually touched on this back on a video in December that I made, but I specifically mentioned Indiana Jones and the Great Circle and Marvel Rivals as games where I was significantly GPU bottlenecked. As well as with using a 4K 240Hz OLED, I really want to take advantage of it, turn up that fidelity and really experience all those bright colors and just amazingness that comes from OLED. And although I am a fan of DLSS 4 and frame generation, actually something that I do use on this card, I do want to stick as close to native as possible even though I will turn on those settings at times in single player titles. But of course we had to test it against the 4090. We can't just bask in the FPS and not know how much faster it is. This is my 4090 Gigabyte Gaming OC. And this is not just some normal 4090. My 4090 is flashed with a Galax XOC BIOS, which gives it just a little bit more power limit, but as well as stops it from being downclocked as much, which gets it a little bit more performance in game. This allowed me to run three gigahertz at 1.1 volt and plus 1000 megahertz on the memory. I bought this 4090 on launch day back in October of 2022, so I was super lucky in the fact that I am allowed to go to 1.1 volt limit on the voltage. Newer cards that were released later, for some reason, either got a 1.07 voltage lock or a 1.05. It's kind of random how they did it, but they ended up locking the voltage, so those cards can actually not overclock as far. My 5090 was running at about 3250 megahertz on the core clock. I did plus 300 offset and I was actually able to run plus 3000 megahertz memory. I actually ran out of slider on the VRAM offset so much that even with the modded MSI Afterburner, which allows you to go to 3000, I still had more that I could have done. Someone give us more overclocking headroom on the VRAM and I wanna see how much this thing can fly. From my experience with the 50 series cards, I've had a 5090, a 5080, and a 5070. Pretty much all of these cards can be pushed 200 megahertz higher. And I think that actually would help a little bit with people not being as mad about how bad quote unquote this generation is the rest of the specs that i used were my 9800 x3d pc max out max overclocks everything all of these benchmarks are either staples in the industry something that has high fidelity or just high fps games that you know or games that i actually play myself everything was tested in both 1440p and 4k because although i do it i do not recommend buying a 5090 and playing at 1080p. Unless, like me, you have the 4K dual mode monitor, which does 4K 240 and 1080p 480Hz. Starting off with 3D Mark, 
an overclocked 5090 is about 33% faster than my 4090 in graphics scores, which is on par for what we should expect generational uplift. When OCing the 5090, you can actually see anywhere from 5 to 7% increase in performance depending on the workload, whether it's rasterization, ray tracing, anything like that. The only reason why I actually do include 3D Mark is because this gives us actual scaling numbers and we can see what really is the max difference or delta between the two. This gives everything a fair advantage and it's supposed to scale with everything. Cyberpunk 2077 with max path tracing shows that in 4K, none of these GPUs are really playable with the 5090 being about 25% faster. But for three grand, getting just over 30 FPS isn't really acceptable. And this is why they push frame gen so hard, because 30 FPS with frame gen can get to 100. Also, Nvidia hasn't said this, but AMD has stated that they do not recommend actually turning on frame generation unless you have above 30 FPS. That is just because there is not enough real frames for you to actually have an enjoyable experience and for frame gen to actually add any smoothness. 1440p though shows a 23% improvement for the 5090, but actually goes above 60 FPS. And let me tell you, the difference between 53 FPS to 66 is something that you will notice and something that you will enjoy. Forza Horizon 5 with the extreme graphics preset shows a lower percentage improvement at 4K with it being only around 20% faster, proving that a tuned 4090 can still get you very good FPS in these high resolutions. I mean, the 4090 was $1,600 in 2022. It can push in 4K. 1440p shows about the same improvement with FPS in this title for being fast paced, high resolution. It's adequate on all these GPUs. Marvel Rivals, a game I specifically mentioned earlier, as well as being an esports title that you need that really high FPS in. You're gonna be constantly moving around your mouse, twitching from side to side. This is that game where that added FPS is noticeable and wanted. And you can see that in 4K, the 5090 is about 20% faster in the averages, but more importantly, 30% higher FPS in the 0.1% lows, which is something I actually instantly noticed when loading up the game, that it actually shocked me that the average FPS was only that much higher because it felt like I was playing a completely different game. In 1440p, the 5090 is a little bit less impressive with it only being around 10% faster in game with the lows not even being that much better. Counter-Strike 2, I added just because this is honestly the game I've been playing the most of lately. And my Discord seems to really love that I bought a 5090 to play Counter-Strike at 1080p. Anyways, in 4K, there is actually a significant 31% higher FPS in the average and 47% increase in the lows, which I didn't expect actually. And in 1440p, a 16% boost in the averages and 5% boost in the lows. I'm so glad I actually ran this benchmark because now I can justify buying a 5090 to play Counter-Strike. Fortnite in performance mode was literally the same thing. Um, the 4090, the 5090, 5090 overclocked in 4K was basically the same. And guess what? In 1440p, it was basically the same thing again. All the averages, all the lows, pretty close. Um, this is run to run variants. They will perform the same. This is using an actual I was playing the Fortnite reload mode in ranked and I was actually using a replay So this was a repeatable source. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is next to Marvel Rivals Probably the most demanding esports game on a graphics card looking at FPS in 4k You see that the 5090 is actually just about 15% faster But when you actually look at the GPU FPS that it gives you you see that the 5090 is about 23% faster than the 4090, meaning that in certain situations, especially GPU bound ones, the 5090 will blow out the 4090 and it will feel completely so much smoother. Moving over to 1440p, you see that the 5090 is only about 11% faster in the averages and going to GPU FPS, you see it being about the same. One thing interesting though, is that the lows are higher on the 4090, but this could just be COD being COD, some update, something weird. If you're a gamer, should you even think about buying the 5090? Well, yeah, I think that if you're someone who is like me, who has a 4K OLED and wants that high fidelity and wants to crank up the settings without having to rely on DLSS and frame gen as what they are, they're crutches. They're crutches for not optimized games. It makes sense actually. And I found games where the 4090 was kind of broken or like beat down, the 5090 could kind of excel. The higher FPS and the smoothness is such noticeable that it's insane and it makes the 5090 
very, very justified in my case. As well as if you want to buy one of the new DisplayPort 2.1 monitors, you can actually use it properly and fully on the 5090 without having to worry about display stream compression, something that I'm actually thinking about upgrading to in the future. If you play 1440p though, the justification for a 5090 really isn't as strong. I'm going to say just get a 4090 and overclock it. Or even if you don't want that super high power draw, throw an undervolt on it. It's going to perform insanely well. The 4090 is the new 1080 Ti. It's the 1080 Ti of the 2020s. I can genuinely see a lot of people buying a 4090, super power efficient. It's going to last forever and they're going to rock that GPU till 2030. And for games where you aren't hitting your monitors or fresh rate with a 4090, that's where DLSS and upscaling comes in or frame gen for a single player title where yes, it adds input latency, but the actual split second millisecond latency of frame gen isn't as important because you're playing single player. Let me know down below what GPU you're rocking and if you're going to upgrade anytime soon and what you're going to do, or if you just think the 5090 is a complete waste of money.